Welcome to Community Conversation. I'm Frank DiCristina from Allnex, and with me I have Charlie Caponeri, long-term, recently retired employee. Well, Frank, I hear you're having a 75th anniversary. You don't look like you're 75. Well, Charlie, actually, yes, the Wallingford plant is turning 75, not me. And uh, on December 8th, we are marking that event, and we're going to have several celebrations to recognize the milestone of which, obviously, we're very excited about. All next is down at the end of uh, South Cherry Street at 528 South Cherry Street. Can you give us an idea of what goes on there these days? Sure. We're a coating resins company. In any paint or coating that would go on a surface, such as an automobile or can product, uh, the resin is a component which provides its functionality. If you think about the fact that you want a coating to be uh, uh, applied evenly and have durability, the, the resin is what helps provide that capability in the coating. We have about 80 different products we produce in our production buildings that go out into the various markets such as automotive, can coatings, deck stains, trim enamel, uh, and other specialty applications. The bounce dryer sheet that you use in your laundry actually has our, our coating in it as well. If a customer went into a paint shop, let's say, and they were looking for the All Next name, would they actually see it on the shelf somewhere on some container of coating? No, so as we sell to the various manufacturers that produce the coating, then those manufacturers may brand their products under their uh, names and, and, and brands. So you won't actually see the All Next name on the shelf, but many of the products that are in a retail hardware store would certainly have Allnex components in it. Okay. Allnex uh, has been around for 75 years, but it hasn't always been known as Allnex. Can you give us a little bit of history of that 75 years? Sure. Uh, originally, the site was an American cyanamide facility going back to the 1940s when it originally started and operated under such for several decades. And then in the early 90s, American Cyanamid was split into two companies, SciTech and American Home Products. The Wallingford site remained a SciTech operation uh, until 2013, at which point SciTech decided to sell its coating resins business, uh, and a private equity firm, Advent International, purchased, purchased us, and that's how we became Allnex at that point in 2013. While we know Allnex, you know, is a Wallingford business, it also has a global presence. Can you give us an example of what's going on on the global side? Yeah, yes, Charlie, and there's actually some recent exciting news there. Allnex, until recently, was a uh, company of about 2,100 employees and uh, 17 operating facilities. We have now merged with another company called Nuplex that had 1,800 employees and 16 plants. So now together, the combined company is a $2.5 in sales, 4,000 employee, and 33 operating plants, and 23 R&D facilities. So quite a large player in the coating resins market, in fact, the largest industrial coatings resin producer now. And it really has a global reach. We have, see now we'll have seven plants in the U.S. Previously, five. much of the growth will be in Asia, where Nuplex was mostly uh, centered. This is going to also potentially bring new opportunities to the Wallingford site as it opens up some different markets and brings new technology into the organization as well. Uh, so we're really excited about the potential this is going to bring for the site to continue to grow and uh, become a bigger player in, in the coating resins business. Well, it sounds promising. Sure is. With the new owners, basically the, the, the Advent International, did they bring some type of a new operating strategy to the site? So the, the most significant difference for us was in 2013 when the new owners came on board. They really stressed the importance of being a good neighbor operating at a level from an environmental standpoint that goes above and beyond what's required necessarily by our, our regulators. Key target was our toxic release emissions levels, which is a uh, reporting process to the DEP or EPA. There's a list of designated chemicals by the EPA that we have to report the emissions. We are not uh, reporting those as a compliance issue. They are, uh, we're operating within our permit, but we still have to report the numbers. Because we're such a large operation in a state that you know, has not had a, uh, as much manufacturing in recent years, 
We've typically been at the top of that list once the data is issued, typically 18 months after the data is reported. Advent felt that it was important for all next to come down off of that list. So we were given an objective to uh, reduce our emissions by 80%, uh, and we've uh, essentially achieved that objective at this point. And we're not stopping there. We're continuing to work on projects that will help us continue to reduce uh, those uh, TRI levels uh, and, and reduce them down as low as we can. Oh, sounds like some good progress. In addition to those efforts, I understand that there are some people at the site that were recipients of the Allnex Safety, Health, and Environmental Excellence Awards. Uh, can you give us a little uh, more information on that? Yes. Uh, one of the key projects in reducing the uh, TRI emissions levels was the control of the nutrients to our wastewater treatment facility, uh, which is just like any public wastewater uh, treatment plant. We have uh, an active biomass there that does the work of treating the chemicals that are, are, are being processed in that system. We do have to uh, feed them nutrients to keep them healthy. The process in the past was more manual, you know, difficult to control at times, so you would tend to over overfeed the system. Uh, 2013, we embarked on a project to implement a new control system, spent several million dollars to put in the controls and the instrumentation that would allow the operators to uh, better control the nutrient feed, which in the end result allowed the uh, nitrates levels that are discharged from the biomass to be lower. And that was really a painstaking effort by the team, a lot of detail, uh, uh, awareness, and management of the uh, of the process with this new tool that they were given. They really put in a lot of hard work to bring those levels down and really did it in a short period of time uh, to achieve the, the uh, targeted uh, goal. Okay, so in other words, there was a reduction in the, uh, the discharges to the river based on that, those efforts. Uh, were, were there some other things done at the treatment plant uh, to help lower the, the overall TRI emissions, as you call them? Yeah, another neat project that we're really uh, uh, proud of is the uh, equalization basin, which is kind of like the inlet basin to the wastewater treatment plant. What happens there is that you're just kind of mixing the streams that come in, and you have emissions during the course of the day, especially in the summer when you have more sunlight, more heating. Uh, you do have some emissions of the components in that equalization basin. So the goal was to reduce those emissions and to cover that basin. And if you think about covering a, an area that is 200 feet by 200 feet uh, in, uh, in dimensions, it started, the concern started to be it could be really costly, difficult to maintain, logistically not real practical. So our engineers came up with a real innovative solution. We had heard about out west, especially where there's water conservation concerns, that they're using um, uh, plastic balls to cover the water reservoirs and retain the drinking water supply in those areas. Well, the same concept can be applied here. We cover the equalization basin with these four-inch round black balls, po polyethylene balls, and uh, it keeps the uh, emissions down because it prevents the heating of the surface. Uh, and as such, we were able to cut our TRI emissions from the equalization basin in half. Uh, and it was a real simple, elegant solution uh, and not as costly as a, a, an actual fixed cover would have been. Wow, sounds like a lot of innovation. Very much so, and uh, it was a, a great project that the, the site has uh, really enjoyed you know, sharing with everyone. Charlie, you were at the site for almost half of its history. What was your role during your career at Allnex? Well, I, starting uh, back in 1985, I started off as a senior environmental engineer in what was then sort of the new environmental services department. Uh, from then, I worked in the environmental area, working, doing a lot of reports, getting out, looking at all the production areas we're doing, and then really taking the regulations that came down as the years progressed, turning them into understandable work instructions for the employees, and making sure that we were in compliance with all the regulations. Then as the uh, plant changed, my role changed, and I got involved more with uh, the wastewater treatment plant we have on site, and again working with the people there at the wastewater treatment plant, and then sort of more, more recently looking at the air regulations at the site working with the various people, uh, making sure that all of our air emissions were in compliance. But really, it's a, a job that really over the years looked at what the site needed to do to be in compliance, and then getting 
different things done for the employees so that they could be in compliance. During the you know, 30 years I worked at the, the Wallingford plant, I saw sort of a change in our ability to be innovative in what we do. So do you have an example of one of those innovative efforts? Back when we looked at the uh, need to control, uh, to a further extent, the emissions from one of our production buildings, uh, we worked with a, a company out of Canada to come up with a means of controlling the air emissions using what they call the biofilter. And it's sort of innovative, it's sort of a, you know, using natural uh, occurring bacteria inside of a chamber, have the emissions pass through the chamber, and then the bacteria essentially use those as their food source. Um, it was innovative. Uh, we had a, a pilot project set up. EPA fit, sent some people in to take a look at it. Local um, environmental um, uh, professional organizations sent people out to take a look at it. It turns out that it didn't quite achieve um, the, the full scale um, control that we were looking for, but you know, we put a lot of effort behind it and we were sort of recognized sort of informally for making that effort to try to come up with sort of an innovative way to reduce emissions that would be more sort of environmentally friendly. But in the end, it didn't work out, but it was a good effort by a lot of people. Well, and that's part of the process of innovation, right? Sometimes you learn from what doesn't work and, and you further innovate to the next step. Right, right. yeah, it was, it, was a nice, it was a nice try. Um, we ended up being able to show that the technology would work, but not consistently over a 24 hour, 365 um, day a year basis, which is really what the regulations require. Charlie, what can, you described for me in terms of the changes that occurred during the course of your career, uh, you know, something that came that you felt was significant in uh, the type of operation we have. A couple of things stick out of my mind as being things that were sort of noteworthy. Uh, I think one of them, and you touched on it a little bit, type of products that we started to produce in one of our buildings where it was the ingredients that go into waterborne deck stains. You know, sort of everyone I think knows that the tendency now in the, in the industry is to have waterborne deck stains that have low emissions. When we started putting those in, I think a lot of people saw there was a good future for the plant. There was a new product line. It was really going to help us, uh, you know, move, move, move forward. That's on the production side. On the environmental side, back in the early 2000s when the site decided that it would be important for, to be ISO 14001 certified, the level of effort that went into getting ourselves certified, I think, was a real, real accomplishment and something that drew a lot of people together, really, to, to make the site sustainable. Looking back, I think that was sort of a legacy that we leave behind so that the people coming after us have a, sort of a blueprint of what to do to remain in compliance with all the regulatory requirements. Environmental systems, management systems that would then take the knowledge of everyone that's at the site, put that into a cohesive format. Make sure you cover all the bases that are required under a full environmental uh, management plan and then have all that in one place as environmental system so that as people retire, as people move on, it becomes sort of an evergreen document. We're certainly still benefiting from all that effort and hard work you did then. We certainly appreciate that. Yeah, well, it was, again, it was a team effort. There was a lot of people, when you do something like that, you need people from the environmental and safety area, production, maintenance you know, shipping and receiving, everyone gets involved with that because all those aspects of that, the operation get, in, get involved with the certification. There's even a communications element in that to be sure that the people, you know, in the plant and outside the plant have an idea of what, you, what you're doing. So. And you mentioned it's important because of keeping continuity in the, uh, in the staffing and in the, uh, you know, the production processes. That, that certainly is a real issue for us. You know, we have a lot of great employees like yourself who have 35, 40 years, even more, of service in the company. And obviously, they're yeah. reaching the point that they're going to move yeah. on to the next stage in their life. And uh, that's a significant challenge for us going forward. We have 30% uh, of our workforce, which is approaching that, that period mm -hmm. uh, where they might retire. And uh, w we obviously need to bring in uh, and infiltrate with uh, new, uh, new staff to, to cover for that in, in a time where we're trying to grow. Uh, so it's, a, it's an exciting time in that regard, uh, but it's a challenging time because continuity is important and uh, understanding the processes and the procedures and what they need to do to be successful in their job is critical. So again, that effort was, was very important to allow us to continue to operate. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's also uh, interesting to note that I've heard that some of the new people coming um, in at the plant are represent third-generation employees working at the same location. So I, that to me 
it says a lot about the location, its people, and the fact that we're you know, still going strong after 75 years. Very much so. We have many cases of second and third generations, and that, that's a part of the success. You know, it's a family atmosphere. We have helped many families allow their children to grow and be successful because of the opportunities that they had at Allnex. And we, we, can, we continue to benefit from, from that as well because uh, there's some really, really good hard workers that come through that site, and uh, it's a testament to the, to the local uh, workforce. Talking about the future, in an effort to increase the transparency on the site, I've heard that you've uh, instituted a community advisory board. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So in the past, there was a, a community advisory panel or board at, at various times, but it had become more dormant in recent years. Recently, we recognized that it was important for us to reach out to the community and have a good cross-section of uh, town officials, business leaders, uh, and just concerned citizens, mm -hmm. which we could engage in and uh, talk about the exciting things that we're doing, like we're doing today here, mm -hmm. and then get feedback and input and any concerns that they may have, raise them so that we are able to incorporate that into our planning and, and strategy as we try to move the, the site forward to grow our business. It's important to understand uh, what is significant in the community and be able to address that. We started in August with the uh, first meeting and we had a great turnout. We have uh, uh, 21 members on the advisory board. It was a real uh, engaging conversation and we'll continue to do that uh, on a regular basis going forward. And it's an evergreen process. It doesn't end because obviously the site's going to continue to, to change and uh, develop over time. So it's important that we keep that dialogue open. Okay. Sounds interesting. I guess continuing on the theme of community events, I've noticed that you've been involved with some community events and sponsored different organizations. Can you give us some more details on that? Sure. We've had several uh, employee-led initiatives to partner in the community and help uh, organizations. We're always very excited to, to help various organizations in the community, and we have uh, over, over the years done so, with such as uh, the Spanish Community of Wallingford, the uh, Hubcap organization, which has a great facility down on Center Street and helps small businesses and other community groups uh, be able to conduct their business and, and grow. The Wallingford uh, Family YMCA is another group we've supported. We're going to continue to support the Celebrate Wallingford event, which is a great community event every year. And it doesn't end there. We have typically holiday charitable uh, activities and, and drives to, uh, you know, for, fam for needy families. It's important that we continue these initiatives and be able to support these groups and, and be an active member of the community uh, uh, to keep it healthy. Well, thank you. I guess sort of in closing, um, what does the future of Allnex look like? Is there a growth strategy, uh, you know, looking to, to the future and hopefully for another 75 years or? Sure. Uh, what's really exciting, as, I, as we talked earlier about the new Allnex and, uh, and the strategy, is that it's really focused on innovation. A lot of the innovation is in uh, applications that have an environmental improvement aspect to them. For example, a new product that we've just started producing here recently in the last year uh, goes into can coatings that coating producers that sell to the can producers are trying to make a uh, a formulation that does not have BPA, which is a chemical concern. It's actually been regulated out in Europe and as such was uh, being produced in our German facility has been for now several years. But in the U.S. it's not regulated. However, the consumers, the public, has started to request that it be not in the coating formulation, in, in the actual packaged product. The product we've developed allows our, our customers to make formulations without BPA and it's a really growing market. You know, the, some of the food producers have announced that by the end of next year, they plan to be BPA free. Uh, and that's really taken off for us and is an exciting new development for the site. Some other examples are we're developing products that are uh, formaldehyde free, where, where that may be a concern in various uh, product applications. Some of that development is happening right at the plant, R&D level type uh, work is happening right at the plant. And uh, we've actually made some trial production batches of, of that product. And then there's even uh, additional products that are a little bit further out, but that would uh, allow paint manufacturers to make low volatile emission paint. There's some regulations that are coming into effect in California 
that require the, just the spray paint that you might use at, at home to have lower volatile emissions. And typically that's going to spread, you know, beyond yep. California as, as that's introduced. And we think we may have a product that would work in that market as well. So really exciting stuff that has a positive impact as well. Oh, sounds good. Well, thank you very much, Charlie, for joining us in Community Conversations.